you is gender equality uh, mainly regarding gender sen gender sensitization i am taking up the topic uh, gender equality between north india and south india uh, which is a, a special uh, topic uh, which even uh, create interest in the minds of participants yeah i don't know maybe three or four days must have gone already with this uh, short term course that might be the th third day by this time you must have got some general picture about gender sensitization or gender issues gender challenges particularly in india as such now let us proceed before going to the exact top topic let me briefly introduce the gender equality as a issue in the global scenario so many of the thinkers sociologists anthropologists feel that it is like other fundamental rights treating equally between male and female is also a human right which should not be neglected and at the same time you just have i hope you the this particular slide is visible to you there has been progress over the last decade but the world is not tracked to achieve gender equality by 2030 so that means it is clear whether it is a developed country or developing country or third world countries or western country or far east countries or southern hemisphere or northern hemisphere the gender issue is persistent everywhere and anywhere women and girls represent half of the world's population let us keep in mind somewhere we feel a male dominated society you go anywhere but when it comes to demographic statistics men and women are almost equal almost equal in some countries not in some countries majority of the countries female dominates over male but still this gender equality is still Uh, not achieved as expected this photograph uh, i have taken from the website of uh, unesco uh, and this particular picture represent uh, the entire continent in the entire whole world of different uh, racial children like negroid mongoloid caucasoid uh, representing the equality equal rights and opportunity for girls and boys help all children fulfill their potential so let us understand the importance of gender equality so here is an, an shocking information i am giving to you on an average women in the labor market still earn 23% less than men see even today in the 21st century when it comes to to salary or package or wages or labor market 23% still women are receiving less than men that to globally i'm talking i'm not talking about india so far i have not uh, come to indian scenario still i'm talking in the world as a whole and uh, even in world this inequality between men and women is clearly seen let us take uh, the 1995 as a landmark because uh, united nations took serious gender issue as a serious issue in the year 1995 from there onwards majority of the countries uh, considered gender equality or gender sensitization as an issue from there you keep observing this slides you will come to know what we have achieved and what it to be achieved see girls life expectancy at birth in 1995 and an average i'm talking because here developed countries developing countries and underdeveloped countries all are clubbed together so now at 2020 the recent data which we have which we have from the united nations uh, website says 67 to 75 and uh, almost 8 year increase of life expectancy coming back to the next slide 
number of girls out of school look at it at the primary and lower secondary and upper secondary till uh, high school even today 67 million girls are out of schools look at it and at the below you observe the female youth literacy you i'm talking about youth literacy we have a bit achieved from 80 to 90 a 10% increase over the over a period of 50 to 40 to 50 years but still there is a gap child marriage it used to happen one in four now we have reduced to one in five have an eye keep close observation there is an improvement between uh, 1995 and 2020 over the issue of gender sensitization but still lot to be achieved lot to be achieved now the issue of post covid and pre covid so you know all uh, during covid there was a lockdown there was a complete standstill of uh, market and day to day activities so men remained indoor children remained indoor and mother as such sisters as such girls as such had lot of works to do in within the four walls so covid post covid changed the scenario look at it there has been a surge in reports of sexual violence women have taken on more care work due to school closures and 70% of health and social workers globally are women look at it nobody you know the research has to be done more research has to be done uh, regarding the gender sensitization and gender equality of post covid phenomenon now the question is uh, i am getting here our around 52 participants all the 52 participants i want to pose a question why should this gender inequality or equality matter to me regardless where you live gender equality is a fundamental human right keep in mind i don't have the picture about the male and female participants here may you know the rough rough numbers of males participating here can anybody unmute and tell me the number of male participants around roughly out of 53 do we have around 20 plus male participants within 20 sir within 20 okay okay uh, the question the very question behind asking this question is uh, even including myself we have not opened up our mind when it comes to gender equality i don't know whether it's a male dominated society or our mindset or uh, maybe our forefathers foundation of this kind of lifestyle but uh, let us understand this it's a sensitive issue they are no way inferior or unequal to us let us understand this fact now there is no field which is not represented by women going to submarine and and even riding uh, warfare everywhere every field is represented by women but why still this gap even this question i am posing for the developed country so for developed country like canada us australia there also we can find some gap now let us come to the indian case why women are better off living in south india rather than north india it's a question i hope uh, some of the participants are representing from north india is that so among these participants anybody from north india who is representing up bihar west bengal punjab delhi haryana rajasthan madhya pradesh anybody from these states if anybody is there kindly yes, unmute sir i am from west bengal sir oh that's nice that's nice okay of course uh, uh, let me show this uh, first uh, let uh, since majority of the students are non geographers let make uh, this one point clear 
we divide north india south india based on geographic aspects rather than cultural aspects the people who are living above the vindhyas are treated as north indians the people who are living below the vindhyas or below the narmada are treated as south indians if you go further a meso level classification we have north india west india east india south india and the madam just now she said from west bengal she may be she representing the eastern part of india whereas the punjab haryana kashmir delhi people will be representing north maharashtra gujarat rajasthan parts of madhya pradesh will be representing west which a major chunk uh, when it comes to south india ranging from southern maharashtra gujarat to kerala telangana andhra tamil nadu and karnataka will be representing southern part we have more micro level representation micro level classification of india look at it north central east northeast west south but for our uh, discussion it is very much clear that we are taking a macro level classification of north india and south india when i am talking about north india dear participants keep in mind i'll be talking about the people of jammu kashmir ladakh himachal uttarakhand delhi punjab haryana rajasthan uttar pradesh bihar west bengal chatisgarh jharkhand and gujarat these are the states will be representing the northern part of india the rest uh, the rest will be representing south and for uh, for our convenient north east is also treated as uh, somewhere uh, in the southern part of india see the question is let me go back to this question why women are better off living in south rather than north it is not an established fact it doesn't mean that only south indian women are enjoying their life and uh, north indian uh, women are uh, deprived no it's not that but the research shows the research says uh, suppose if the same question is posed and uh, try to get the answer here in front of you you have some of the convenient answer why south indian women are better off when it when it when we compare to north india so south indians women are more highly educated yes we have a data when it comes to literacy and education south india are far ahead than north india the live longer definitely i'm exclusively depending on women here we have, we do have uh, the life expectancy and life expectancy is much better in south indian women compared to north india have higher sex ratio definitely for every 1000 boys uh, close to we have 980 to 990 average there are some states like uh, goa kerala they cross 1000 1000 for every 1000 uh, male boys uh, we have more number of uh, female population get married later uh, definitely average marriage life of rajasthan bihar up is even today is 18 to 19 whereas when it compared to south india it is more than 23 to 24 have a lower crime crime rates means the crime against women is much lesser average and an average no doubt when it uh, kerala is exceptional because we have a data uh, the crime against women in kerala is much higher when it uh, compared to Uh, the other southern counterparts have more control over the resources definitely resources are accessible by women compared to north have more freedom of movement communication have smaller difference in literacy rate between men and women look at it so by looking at all this established fact based on the data i am not talking about uh, just a a general talk these are all the information i am sharing with you is based on uh, the data women in south india look at it 
and north india and uh, <clears throat> why women are better off living in south india rather than north the alice evans and a wonderful researcher has taken out a research if you want further information about this i'm i am going to share the link you can go further uh, in detail and get much better information a lady you know she came from london all the way with her research team she conducted uh, in depth analysis over this gender issue between north india and south india and her some of the research outcome have been shared with you and here she according to her caste religion also play an important role between this south north divide look at it according to her survive in fancy educated marry later choose their own husband look at it when it goes when it when it compared to north indian north indian girls have least choice to choose their husband and an average i'm talking but in urban the picture is totally different in urban centers of north india like delhi lucknow but you now patna even kolkata and the uh, totally the picture is different they have much better access to resource they have much better uh, freedom of movement but on an average because more than 57% people still live in rural area and we cannot neglect uh, uh, the rural folk from that point of view the gender inequality persists between north india and south india so even when it comes to have having children south indian women have lesser number of children or fewer children compared to north excess more control over the, the dowry uh, dowry problem still persists in north india though it is prevalent in south india but the magnitude the scale is much less socialize with friends no doubt the south indian girls have much better freedom they can socialize in the college in the school the university even so, uh, uh, society at large they have much freedom given by the parents given by the husband given by the family members whereas in case of south in north india still there is a iron curtain uh, there is a blockade and even work alongside with the men we have much better uh, picture now comes why the question is why what happened why there this gap why there is a clear demarcation between uh, north indian women and south indian women why uh, uh, this glaring picture uh, there are some historical facts not only a sociological and economic facts even historically uh, we have parda system we have burka system uh, na beti na roti these are all the uh, catchy words when it is related to when it is compared to north india and south india legacy of wheat cultivation can anybody unmute and tell me what is the logic behind wheat cultivation and the gender equality how do you relate uh, because majority of the north indian states produce wheat compared to south india south india is rice dominated but how do you relate how do you correlate between uh, the gender equality of north india and south india with that of wheat cultivation do you have any idea your own personal experience or your any answer from your side dear participants how how do you uh, justify the wheat cultivation yes about the strength and power based on the nutrition food the <laughs> rice and wheat no, no 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 don't go to that uh, uh, nutritional value it is let me share but no according to that uh, our um, uh, Uh, remaining uh, work will be different now, so that's why I'm. 
maybe look so at based the... on that uh, it will uh, propose us to better so that's why climate conditions sir uh huh climate conditions sir no 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 it is nothing to do with the climate just observe this map first this is the wheat suitability main labors yes ah exactly 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 may know who gives the answer jay kumar ah madam you are absolutely right uh, it's all uh, labor intensive look at it this picture will tell you the better story the rice plantation you know beginning with the rice plantation till the harvest rice cultivation is women labor force dominated whereas a wheat requires least women labor look at this map the red color represented by wheat cultivation suitability wherever you cultivate wheat the requirement of women labor force is very less the requirement of women labor force is very less whereas wherever the rest of the india uh, i am moving this uh, cursor uh, even northeastern states wherever wheat wherever rice wherever paddy is planted and harvested you require plenty of women labor force that make women to go out of the house that make women to participate in the uh, workforce there she gets some kind of liberty there she gets some kind of independence there she gets some kind of economic power she gets the labor in her hand from that money she is going to have her independent life even getting children educated even giving basic amenities to her kids now there is a clear indication the legacy of we look at this census we have the recent census is 2011 the census by 2021 the fresh census should have been conducted due to covid and due to adoption of technology still it is postponed uh, we have so far we have not got the accurate census data because it has to be conducted but we going by this past data see the sex ratio the better the better performers are definitely south india look at kerala even chatisgarh for that matter look at north in northeastern states they are all far better when it's compared to north particularly haryana punjab are the worst performers they are just 830 females over 1000 boys that's alarming a number and the number which worries a lot this gap if this gap is widened there will be a disastrous for a demographic uh, structure uh, there is a research of the people from uh, the people of haryana and uh, particularly delhi they go to nepal in search of bride in search of girls the suitable girls marriage migration across the international border not across the state border people of haryana go to nepal to get girls for their boys something which is unique or peculiar then the second one is occupation pastoralism even pastoralism because majority of the jats uh, and even uh, the punjab and uh, gujars bhotias uh, the some of the other tribes in jammu hilly tracts of himachal uh, these people are still uh, participate pastoralism means animal husbandry uh, and uh, rearing uh, animal for uh, dairy products and uh, flesh meat and these people always head uh, the men will be heading the family so in that sense uh, women have lesser role to play so he, so when women are restricted to within the four walls she doesn't get much independence she doesn't get much freedom for the free movement look at it the other reason is uh, the islamic invasion north india uh, was was more susceptible for invasion from persia means uh, the present iran 
and Afghanistan and Turkey through Khyber Pass, through Bolan Pass. And uh, these, uh, when these Muslim invasion, when Islamic invasion occurred on Kashmir, Punjab, uh, Delhi, UP, Bihar, uh, the demography changed, got changed. Uh, the strict uh, Islamic uh, rules were also uh, set in for uh, North Indian non-Muslims. So in that way, uh, a kind of uh, Parda system, Burka system, and a restricted uh, movement for women was enforced uh, way back in uh, 9th and 10th century itself. And that lifestyle moved uninterrupted because uh, when Ghazni came, when Ghori came, uh, when Delhi Sultans like uh, Slave Dynasty, Kilchi Dynasty, Tughalak Dynasty, uh, Sayyid, the Lodis, Mughals, in the Mughals, Babur, Humayun, Akbar, Shah Jahan, Jahangir, Aurangzeb. Uh, these are all uh, more than 400 years. The North India was uh, under the rule of uh, uh, Islamic rulers, invad invaders. From their administration, some kind of uh, male dominance uh, took over and uh, the people uh, somehow subjugated uh, to the kind of uh, lifestyle. Whereas in, when it comes to South India, uh, these kind of uh, foreign invasion, uh, Islamic segregation, segregation did not happen. Though there were some Bahamans, uh, Shahi Sultans, and some, some other Islamic rulers uh, did rule South India, but the tenure, the duration was very, very less. So somehow the onslaught of this uh, invasion uh, got, ex uh, got escaped. So South Indians performed uh, better and still the gap is continuing. Look at it. The, the notion that male kin would lose honor if women were degraded by outsiders led to northern women increasingly concealing their bodies. Look at it. This is the research outcome I'm reading with inverted comma. The notion that male kin would lose honor if women were degraded by outsiders led to the northern women increasing, increasingly concealing their bodies, lowering their gaze, averting their eyes. Even today, educated Bahu, educated maybe sister-in-law or daughter-in-law, she has to enter and exit with lowering her head with this kind of parda. Even today, I'm talking about 21st century. This matters a lot. Nowhere in South India, these kind of uh, restrictions this, this kind of iron curtain could be seen. Those effects, look at this last sentence, those effects persist even today. Even today you have such kind of social segregation. Now, going further back to 1800, 90% recorded sati cases occurred in Bengal. Now the the madam, which she is you know, just now, she spoke from West Bengal. She should agree that even during the 19th century, I'm talking, 90% of recorded sati was, was from Bengal. That's why Raja Ram Mohan Rai fought against this sati. He was instrumental in criticizing the sati system of Bengal. No, Raja. Raja Ramohan Rai was least bothered about the Sati system of Rajasthan. He was more worried about the Sati system of Bengal. But look at it. When it comes to Madras and Mumbai, the number is very less, negligible. When Madras was ravaged by famine in 19th century, later 19th century, sex ratio remained even, remained even. That means parents gave equal weightage to male boy and female boy, you know, male and female children. 
the same status was maintained when case of north india when there was a famine when there was a drought the male children were taken well care of whereas girls were neglected there are a lot of mortality of female that's why the balance got imbalanced that's why we have uh, we could notice more number of boy, boys survived famine in case of girls see in 1880 girls in kerala and karnataka married at the age of 15 to 16 i'm talking about 19th century <laughs> rajasthan took another century to catch up this that means even today the marriage age of rajasthani girls is 16 look at the number look at it look at the map uh, this this part since it is not colored because the survey was not conducted because it is commandering it is coming under pok pakistan occupied kashmir uh, the the place where i am moving the cursor and this part is aksai chin where china has got a control in these two empty places the census was not able to conduct it so in the rest of the india we conducted and the data is here see the number lighter the color the positive is the result darker the color the negative is the result look at it Uh, the i am speaking with the st statistics and data it's not a, any general talk look at kerala and mizoram so e that means to say see let me correlate now let me correlate uh, with the dowry see darker the color more dowry harassment lighter the color less dowry harassment see states like gujarat almost zero dowry harassment cases so what it means why we have put this question the gender equality between north india and south india uh, the image the statistics the data is reflecting in front of you Uh, let me show with the graph using the census and kindly go through the index follow the blue line look at it from 1900 how slow and steady look at it see the red line how fast and how the progression is made still there is a huge gap still there is a huge gap and an average even in case of urban though urban is much better much better when it comes to oh, literacy rate but many many years to many many years as required to catch up with the urban counterparts no no i don't i don't see um, any positive light on this aspect india need to be improved a lot when it comes to gender inequality look at it women who had secondary education but say no of choice for husband see the women of rajasthan madhya pradesh bihar don't have the choice liberty of freedom of choosing their partners look at it here south, south indian states their final say when it comes to matrimonial when it comes to marriage 
the final say would be girls girls have much better independence to to, to choose their companion to choose their partner life partners see the sex ratio for the past 110 years not for a decade i'm showing here not for two or three decades and an average 100 years literacy i am showing uh, sex ratio i am showing throughout the history for the past 100 years south indians are much better because you know, more males on an average equal to females but north india no they have a choice because of excessive attachment toward male children we put it in putra vyamoha why do how do we justify how do you justify look at it percentage of women who say men eat first <laughs> look at it means cooking preparing food waiting for the husband husband sometimes comes at 10 o'clock at 11 o'clock at 12 o'clock she has to wait look at it and still this persists this culture in my home in my own home my wife waits till 8:30 if i do not turn up she takes her dinner she doesn't wait for me so that's the liberty she has that not, that must be then only you are treating your life partner equally now what is the necessary to make her to wait but north indian women have accepted the tradition which used to be in 19th century which used to be in 18th century they have accepted that tradition see look at it south india though it is one of the criteria this is one of the criteria to demarcate between the north indian and south indian gender equality but it's a good it's a good yardstick it's a good yardstick urban female labor force i'm talking about urban female labor force participants the data is 2018 more more participant from south india people of bihar have not at all allowed urban female labor force i'm talking about be careful it's not a uh, wages i'm talking about i'm not talking about salary i'm not talking about salary i'm talking about wages kuli vetanad bage maatartilla nan i'm not talking about the salary i'm talking about wage look at it the participants south india is highly reflective glaring compared to north india you have to assess yourself there is a clear cut demographic difference between north india and south india and you forget about these aryan dravidian these theory do you forget about these this theory of aryan uh, invasion or so no aryans are represented by north india and dravidians are represented by south india no it is nothing to do with this racial uh, combination it is uh, uh, it is not even ethnic combination it is india as a whole we are talking about indians india as a whole bharat as a whole between north india and south india we are least bothered about the ethnicity or racial uh, classification no it is not the yardstick because though american in america more than 30% are non whites now they are enjoying on uh, equal on par with the whites whether it is canada or mexico or america even in germany france there are plenty of non whites means african african european and african american they are enjoying equal rights then what happened to india it's all uh, the mindset of north india and south india even cultural difference for that matter <laughs> look at this see percentage of women expecting son alone to support them in old age look at it elli idivi now yav prapanchadalli idivi 
why a kid mukh load ko bartana amna what will be the mistake if girl child takes care of us majority of the indian on an average more than 80% of indians in the survey said at their old age son should take care of instead of daughter mindset these are all mindset uh, very shocking including the people of goa including the people of goa in that case uh, tamil nadu is much better and even arunachal pradesh much better karnataka somehow uh, giving weightage to girl child but rest of india all are inclined towards male or boy or father as the head of the family not mother though it is debatable look at a, a photograph from bangalore a very recent a photograph see the placards read each and every placard you will come to know at least this much this much of liberty we have in south india karnataka in particular you can't expect this kind of liberty in haryana in rajasthan in bihar see this this photograph has been clicked in 1930 shared by forbes 1930 and shared in the 1996 this 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 particular snap was clicked in 1930 in madras girls at school in madras see i should say instead of girl i i can say women that kind of liberty the women enjoy in south india in 1930 itself now scene is much better in chennai if you go to chennai go to hyderabad come to bangalore even mysore women enjoy on par with the men no glaring discrimination can be seen this picture is very common in north india go to rajasthan whether it is jaisalmer or jaipur or udaipur or ganganagar or bikaner go to haryana panipat sonipat chandigarh anywhere you go this picture is very common no i'm not against this picture uh, if the tradition goes let it go but the question is whether female are treated on par with the male that's the question the big question mark if the tradition has them to wear this particular attire let them because it's all ultimately culture but life has such life has a whole female should also enjoy on par with the male that's the today's uh, the topic of discussion i was telling you if you want further information on that uh, on particularly on this gender issue between north india and south, south india pw research center an american research center has conducted in recently just a year back in the 2022 how indians view gender role in families and society the topic indians accept women as a political leaders look at it but many favor traditional gender roles in family life look at how can you give a justification for this indian people as such are ready to accept women as a mla women as a mp women as a minister women as sarpanch women as a zp member they are ready to accept but not ready to accept as the head of the family the tradition Uh, restricting girls to kitchen is still continuing that mindset should be changed it has to be changed see have a focus to watch this particular image have a close watch let me give you more than a minute you should observe let's see people in uttar pradesh karnataka overwhelmingly say sons should handle parents funeral rituals 
a question was asked who should complete the funeral rites sattaga appa athwa amma theerkondaga sattaga antima samskarada vidhi vidhanagalanna yar maadbeku this was the question posed uh, to the participants and the answer is before you have a keen watch and this blue represent hindi belt this brown represented by south india and the percentage has been given karnataka is an exception state when it comes to this particular question in south india 81% people in karnataka said the sons should do the burial rituals see kerala only 30% west they are ready to accept female or women to do the final rituals or burial rituals by their daughter that's a good change that's a good change and uh, wherever survey was not able to conduct it was shown in a white color uh, because of various reasons known to them known to the researchers see this up it's not in oh, i know or oh, any kind of uh, surprise up people definitely they are highly traditional and orthodox and male dominated mindset in up bihar they must have said it and uh, no shock no surprise but what about karnataka and even what about andhra 60% telangana 68 even uh, the more, the delhi the population of delhi uh, more than 90% are urbanites in delhi 90% of people of delhi are urbanites only 10% they live in fringe areas who represent the rural area still 56% are respondent said that sons should do the uh, last rituals uh, this is a clear indication that still there is a gap between the male and female there is no gender equality mindset now let me show you some of the statistics keep observing the uh, the heading uh, data most states prefer to improve women safety by teaching boys respect over teaching girls udugurige buddhi helbeku udigergalla ant we have to teach boys how to treat girls look at it have a keen observation anyhow this ppt will be shared with you but uh, for the later <laughs> just have a look south india and north india for the same question it's a good question see because everybody think that girl should improve no boy should the the mindset of boy should be changed <laughs> the mindset of the boys should be changed and that should start from at, at home parents should teach the boys that respect them may know who is unmute who has under the unmute please mute it see next question look at it indians or will be we say they they value gender equally let us see the data now the question was posed do you treat male and female equally general population 80% said yes suppose if we take is as a cross section of religious religion wise 81% hindu said yes we value gender equality 76% muslim said yes they value gen gender equality Christian seventy percent, six eighty three percent, Jain eighty three percent, Buddhist ninety one percent. Look at even men, around seventy nine percent people are saying they value gender equality. College graduates or the pre university, 
the wide range of age gap is taken into consideration while asking a question and the result is before you so except only uh, the christians and muslims of uh, around 30 to average 30 to 35% people are saying they they don't give the value for the gender equality the rest is saying they value equality in terms of gender then the next question which was posed south indian states among least likely to say men should have more rights to scarce job than women look at the uh, the result see that means it is very clear by looking at these data and statistics you can easily perceive you can easily understand and there is a clear cut demarcation between the mindset of north india and south india see see uh, the red color uh, the south indian states karnataka andhra just 45% kerala look at it only 28% means they are ready to accept then the next question slightly more indian say it is very important for a family to have at least one son then at least one daughter <laughs> look at it see the question and try to get the result 94% general population said yes they need to have at least a son but people also said 90% of daughter the difference is only 3% but when it taken to the religion wise the difference increased to 9% when we consider among muslims so except uh, the muslim religion majority of the other religions they said there is no much difference between having a male or a female having a son or a daughter see this is a very interesting uh, table i am showing you most indians say men and women should both care for children but many support traditional gender roles many support traditional gender roles i hope you are getting what i am saying traditional gender role the typical the best example is restricting girls restricting women to kitchen restricting women for household activities restricting women for the traditional work which the women of 18th century with the women of 17th century used to do general population see earning money taking care of children making decision about expenses look at it general population among religion wise you get a better picture here have a keen observation have a focused watch you get a mixture of opinions see that is the burning issue that is why the sociologists anthropologists economists even or oh, the policy makers planners some of the politicians like uh, smriti irani and uh, rita bahuguna and uh, mayavati uh, the other uh, anandi ben patel uh, the late sushma swaraj uh, these were the, the, the these are the women who were stalwart uh, they were actually very serious about this gender equality and uh, treating uh, women on par with the men lot to be achieved uh, the india is inching towards the gender equality but uh, the efforts need to be put more on this uh, particular issue see the question now most hindi built indian completely agree that wives must always obey husband look at it here comes the question now the <laughs> the very spontaneous and instant uh, 
question is why why always wife should listen to husband don't we have the liberty to say why don't we have the liberty to say no see the result now only hindi belt dominates here see himachal pradesh 90% respondent said yes wife should listen to husband thank god uh, uh, the chatisgarh see sometimes we say chatisgarh is a tribal state chatisgarh is a backward state chatisgarh is a state where literacy is very less some kind of uh, 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 pre determined mind we have towards uh, these chatisgarh and jharkhand but look at their response See the response. Shri Devi, Shri Devi Siddhanta, kindly mute it. See, look at it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kindly mute. Kindly mute. Some voice is coming from your side. Yes, sir. Okay. So, Chhattisgarh is an exception state, though the state is culturally. traditionally uh, particularly culturally or from the literacy point of view from science and technology point of view from education point of view they back they are much behind but their response when it comes to gender equality is much better they say husband and wife relation should should be should be a reciprocal reciprocity is required Look at it. Our Karnataka, thirty-four percent say yes. Why should listen to me? The bet the better picture we have. Now comes the another survey means another uh, about a third of Indians say sons should have greater right to inherit from parents. Now comes the question. Now there is a lot of discussion is going on. Uh, I hope. Uh, 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 the participants will agree with me there are plenty of uh, civil cases have been put in rural areas even in urban areas particularly by uh, daughters asking equal property rights asking equal property rights uh, and fighting with their younger brothers and elder brothers you guys you know to observe madidre Uh, i am talking about the participants of karnataka who can follow kannada tumba jana halligalalli appandu aasti nanagu equal agbeku naan en kadme this uh, this trend this trend is emerging right now uh, and observe this particular uh, about a third of indians say sons should have greater right to inherit parent in a property from the parents see this is the general 34% sons only 2% daughters look at it see the huge gap see the huge gap even religion wise again dominated by muslims means 42% muslim says their property should go to son not to daughters somehow oh, this is unacceptable a person as such suppose if you pose this question to me suppose if you pose this question to me i say the property inherited by my parents should be equally divided to boy and girl son and daughter no there was a situation during 7th century or 18th century or 15th century because there was a marriage migration and women were least uh, educated they had to depend on their husband and their in-laws they rarely come back to claim the property of their parents but now with this improvement in technology improving transportation improving living condition improving in literacy and education improving workforce improving in uh, job market how can you justify how can you justify this discrimination no uh, this is 
of course it's a debatable debatable one ready answer yen kodtare hallili indre avlu madvege lakshya tarpe kharch maad kalisidivi innen matte kododu the people say plain lakhs of rupees have been spent on marriage so that's why they have lost uh, the right to claim the property but no no it's not so it is not so when it comes to sharing property that you see the question is inherited property inherited property means the property which has been passed to you by your parents by your grandparents suppose if you have earned property if you are earning by yourself you give whoever you want no we don't come in your way if you have inherited the property from your parents that has to be equally partitioned it has to be equally divided between son and daughter no discrimination at all no discrimination at all whatsoever in that sense oh, there is plenty of uh, uh, things to be studied discussed and with this uh, with this slide i would like to end my talk on gender equality between north india and south india if you have any specific question regarding this particular topic regarding the slides which i have shown you can unmute and raise one by one uh, if any kind of queries or if any kind of doubts or any any kind of any kind of explanation you require particularly on gender equality i am ready to answer now uh, it is open for discussion sir please not kindly, uh, kindly introduce yourself and your uh, address and then speak my uh, anita am telli sir nan sir anita am am telli okay fine here sister kalgada sir kopla district kopla dora matadi matadi sir iga ನಾರ್ತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾದವರು ಎಜುಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಆಗಿ ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹಿಂದುಳ್ದಾರ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಯು ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮ್ ಒಳಗ್ ಟಾಪರ್ ಅವರೇ ಇರ್ತಾರ ನೋಡಿ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಹೇಗಿದೆ ನೋ ಡೌಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ಕಾಂಪಿಟೇಟಿವ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ಲಿ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಯು ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಜೆ ಡಬಲ್ ಇ ಆರ್ ನೀಟ್ ಆರ್ ಈವನ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮ್ಸ್ ರೈಲ್ವೆ ರಿಕ್ರೂಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮ್ಸ್ ಎನಿ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾಫ್ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಕಮಿಷನ್ ನೋ ಡೌಟ್ ದ ನಾರ್ತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ಬಟ್ ಯು ಫರ್ಗಾಟ್ ಟು ರೈಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಕ್ವೈರಿ Uh, only male boys are dominating not females north indians definitely performing better but the ratio is 80 20 80 percent boys 20 percent girls and another part is see the employment opportunities are very very less in north india in their respective states means uh, uh, their public service commission bihar public service commission or up public service commission but uh, at the central level opportunities are more and uh, at the high school level the students are trained so oh, there is a saying bihar do nudga ange ias question paper na 10th udugan kotbitru avano out of 100 30 to 40 questions answer martanante adhe same question is given to bangalore boy he is not able to answer even 10 that means when it comes to training part uh, the north indian counterpart are much better ಬಟ್ ಜೆಂಡರ್ ಈಕ್ವಾಲಿಟಿ ಬಂದಾಗ ಅದು ಯಾಕೆ ಮ್ಯಾಚ್ ಆಗ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಇನ್ನು ಹುಡುಗಿಯರ್ನ ಹೆಣ್ಮಕ್ಳನ್ನ ಮನೆ ಒಳಗೆ ರಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಫೈನ್ ಬಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವೇಶನ್ ಅನಿತಾ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಎನಿ ಮೋರ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಸರ್ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಸರ್ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನಾಗೇಶ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಅಜ್ಜಂಪುರ ಸರ್ ಚಿಕ್ಕಮಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ sir uh, uh, first of all uh, i will congratulate you because you have done wonderful presentation with the statistical information oh, thank you thank you so much so the thing is uh, uh, andre, uh, there is so much of laws uh, regarding the women empowerment and uh, there is so much of policies also uh, so ishtella idrunu so we are not in uh, uh, position to equalize the tarli uh, kaagtilla because neevu heladage in the panchayat level only 33% has given but that 33% also the problem is uh, reservation ko tegra but adalita anta bandaga gannandre maartare alli kuda so ishtalla idrunu why can't we uh, 
ಇನ್ನೂ ಅವೇರ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಆಗ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಇನ್ನೂ ಸಸ್ಟೈನ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಎಂಪವರ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಆಗ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ವೇರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಫೈಲ್ಡ್ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಫೇಲ್ ಆಗಿದ್ವಿ ಫೈನ್ ಫೈನ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವೇಶನ್ ಐ ಡೂ ಅಗ್ರಿ ವಿತ್ ಯುವರ್ ಕ್ವೈರಿ ಬಟ್ ಮೈ ಒನ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಅವರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಒಂದ್ ಕಡೆ ಕುತ್ಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದೆ ಜೀನಲ್ಲಿ ಮೇಲ್ ಆರ್ ಸುಪೀರಿಯರ್ ಫಿಮೇಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ಫೀರಿಯರ್ ಅಂತ ಅಥವಾ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಏನೋ ಒಂಥರ ಈಗೋ ಇದೆ ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ಈಗೋ ಇದೆ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಲ್ಲ ನಾವು ಫಿಮೇಲ್ ನ ಆನ್ ಪಾರ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೀ ಅವ್ರ ಯಾವ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ವಾಟ್ ವೇ ಶೀಸ್ ಇನ್ಫೀರಿಯರ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಇನ್ ವಾಟ್ ವೇ ಶೀಸ್ ಲೋವರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೀ ಅನ್ನೋದು ನಮ್ ತಲೆಗೆ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಬಂದ್ರೆ ಡೆಫಿನೆಟ್ಲಿ ವಿ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ ನಮ್ ಮನ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಅಕ್ಕಳಿದ್ರೆ ಅಥವಾ ಅಕ್ಕ ತಂಗಿ ಇದ್ರೆ ಅಲ್ಲೇ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಮಿನೇಷನ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಗ್ಬಿಡುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಏ ನೀನ್ ಹೋಗು ಏ ನೀ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಇರು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಗ್ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಚೇಂಜ್ no uh, in that aspect uh, i definitely appreciate the western world you go to sweden or come to finland or go to canada western world definitely avaru avishadalli they are far ahead thumba munde iddare now ad ellavannu follow martivi avrudanna dress food habits culture style ivella follow martivi but when it comes to gender equality we utterly fail miserably fail to catch up with their pace ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಮಿಸ್ ಮಂಜನ್ ಮಿಸ್ ನಾಗೇಶ್ ನೀವು ಹೇಳಿದ್ದು ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವೇಶನ್ ಇದೆ ಬಟ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಆಸ್ ಯು ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಪಾಲಿಸಿಗಳು ಲಾಗಳೆಲ್ಲ ಇದೆ ಅಂದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ವೆನ್ ಸಿಟಿಸನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅವೇರ್ ವೆನ್ ಎಜುಕೇಟ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಹ್ಯೂಜ್ ಗ್ಯಾಪ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಲಿಟ್ರೇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಜುಕೇಟೆಡ್ಸ್ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಆ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಬರಬೇಕು ಆಮೇಲೆ ಪಾಲಿಸಿಗಳನ್ನ ನಾವು ಎಷ್ಟು ಬುದ್ಧಿವಂತ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ಆಗ್ತಿರಂಗೇನೆ ಹೌ ಟು ಬ್ರೇಕ್ ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನ ಬೇಗ ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡ್ಕೋತೀವಿ ಹೌ ಟು ಬ್ರೇಕ್ ದ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ಅಂತ ಹೌ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ದ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ಅನ್ನೋದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಹೌ ಟು ಬ್ರೇಕ್ ದ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ಅನ್ನೋದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಅಹೆಡ್ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನೋ ಡೌಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ನನ್ನ ಇನಿಷಿಯಲ್ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ಸ್ ತೋರಿಸ್ದಾಗ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ತೋರಿಸಿದ್ವಿ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ನೈಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ದೆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ ಇಂಪ್ರೂವ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಡೆಫಿನೆಟ್ಲಿ ಈಗ ಐವತ್ತು ವರ್ಷದಿಂದ ಮಹಿಳಾ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿಗೂ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ಮಹಿಳಾ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿಗೂ ತುಂಬ ಚೇಂಜಸ್ ಇದೆ ಬದಲಾವಣೆ ಇದೆ ಬಟ್ ಯು ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ರೆವಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ವೇ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಎವಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ವೇ ನಿಧಾನಕ್ಕೆ ವಿಕಾಸ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಅದು ಕ್ರಾಂತಿ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಹೋಪ್ ದ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಮಚ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಹಲೋ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಹೇಮಾ ಯುವರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರಾಜ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಜೈಪುರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಜೈಪುರ್ ಜೈಪುರ್ ಓ ಫ್ರಮ್ ರಾಜಸ್ಥಾನ್ Uh, basically i'm from up but i'm you know uh, walking in rajasthan uh, mm-hmm. you know you are narthi you know from our point of view you are narthi ha huh, you can say i think i don't love this categorization even <laughs> <laughs> anyway from, the, from, the, from the, this the, only from this point of view i'm telling of course we are uh-huh, indian if, we are indians nothing yeah, to worry uh, only gender equality yeah, yeah. Uh, because some we have to categorize the data uh, whether i like it or not so i don't mind it also actually and and, and uh, i am very much you know uh, uh, in consensus with you that unless we are changing the mindset okay we may have a number of policies okay. we can talk idealistic things into the papers yes. but it will not be transmitting into the ground reality and somewhere this mindset how do we develop is developed through the cultural conditioning Correct. unless we are aiming that changing it at a very grassroots level which is a family i would say family school and all those because you know change also has certain repercussions certain consequences certain cost are people empowered to bear that cost i think that we should also focus upon yes you are absolutely you know there is a yeah because there is a lot of things uh, people want to change but sometimes people are scared of the the cost of the change you know even though there are a lot of you know the the the, the policies or the awareness program which are over there because as a women what i perceive until that uh, from the time this has come up beti bachao beti par how i have a lot of reservation with the term beti why it can't be a girl because the moment we to use the term beti yes. it means yes. my beti my daughter and then the discrimination is very much available there the work for because with whom i'm working is someone else daughter and i don't have the my responsib
Yeah. Anyhow, it's Sorry? a definitely it's a great, a very good observation, and I'm getting the signal from the uh, organizer that uh, I should wind up my talk because uh, the the next thank resource you. person is ready. Very very, very very uh, thank you so much and a uh, nice uh, participant, very active participant. I'm happy. Uh, keep uh, don't uh, do all these short course or RC course for the purpose of just doing. Just enrich yourself and deliver the same goods to students. And let all belong to the same community of teaching. Let progress our teaching skills. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you.